Welcome to Scripps News Live. I'm Lauren Magarino. Former President Trump leads Republican presidential polling by a wide margin, despite facing 91 felony charges in four jurisdictions. Two of the cases point to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election, creating a movement among some liberals and anti-Trump conservatives to keep him off the ballot when it comes time to vote. The legal theory stems from Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which says in part, no person shall hold any office having previously taken an oath and engaged in insurrection or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Trump is months away from being tried on any of these charges and states will begin printing primary ballots soon. We address this subject with a nationally recognized election law scholar here on Scripps News Live last week. There might be some questions in the primary, but I think part of it is trying to get at least some state somewhere to reach the question about whether or not this provision of the Constitution applies to former President Trump. And if it does, then maybe trying to get a court to weigh in and provide some resolution for this once and for all. But it's a messy process ahead of November of 2024. Several states are looking at this now, including New Hampshire, which traditionally holds the first in the nation primary. New Hampshire's Republican Secretary of State David Scanlon asked the state's attorney general to examine if the 14th Amendment should be applied to Trump in the upcoming election. Noah Bookbinder joins us now. He is the president and CEO of the nonprofit watchdog group Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. And Crew, for short, believes that the 14th Amendment disqualifies Donald Trump. So much so, your, your group is representing six Republican and unaffiliated voters in a lawsuit filed in Colorado to disqualify Trump there. So uh, first question off the top, why Colorado? Well, in, in deciding where to bring an action, we looked at a couple of things. We looked at where there was state law that provided a clear process in Colorado, there's a law saying that the Secretary of State has a, a duty to remove from the ballot anyone who's not qualified. And it also um, provides for individuals to go to court to say that somebody's not qualified. So there's the right kind of law. Uh, we looked at where states are in the, in the calendar in terms of their primaries, so where a court would see this as ripe. And finally, where there were plaintiffs, sort of courageous people who were willing to bring this kind of case. And all of that um, brought us to Colorado. It's the first uh, of these actions that, that uh, we took. It won't be the last. Well, I, your group describes itself as nonpartisan, but it's also been described as left-leaning. How do you convince the courts or the court of public opinion that this isn't just a political hit job? Well, I think for one thing, we start with the plaintiffs in this case who include uh, the former Republican uh, majority leader of the Colorado State Senate and Colorado State House of Representatives, a former Republican member of the U.S. Congress, uh, a conservative uh, columnist for the Den Denver Post. Uh, you know, these are not a bunch of liberals. These are people who feel really strongly that we need to protect this democracy from those who have attacked it and, and could attack it again. Um, and, you know, that is, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, the Constitution is not optional. The Constitution uh, is clear about who is disqualified. There are now uh, a wide variety of voices, including leading conservative law professors, uh, like uh, professors Bowd and Paulson, who put out an article that, that a lot of people are looking at who, may, who say that the Constitution clearly disqualifies Donald Trump. Uh, really renowned former um, federal judge, Mike, uh, J. Michael Ludig, another leading conservative. So these are folks across the political spectrum who say that the law is clear and it needs to be enforced. Yeah. Well, former President Trump isn't actually charged with insurrection or aiding an insurrection when we're looking at, you know, all of these charges across four different jurisdictions. So how does Crew think that this 14th Amendment legal theory will hold up in court, even if this makes its way up to the Supreme Court? If you look at the, the case law, uh, whether it's the, the law from the 1860s applying this provision to Confederates, which was the, the context in which uh, the, this part of the Constitution was adopted, uh, or a case that, that uh, we brought in New Mexico last year in which uh, a county commissioner who helped organize the, the January 6th insurrection was disqualified. All of that case law makes clear that you don't need criminal charges. You don't need criminal convictions. This is a separate standard. It's not, it's not a criminal punishment. It's just a qualification for office, just like you need to be at least 35 to be president and you need to be a natural born citizen. So what you know, we intend to do 
is to go into court and prove with evidence and witnesses um, by a preponderance of the evidence that uh, this was an insurrection. Donald Trump engaged in insurrection. Uh, a court can make that judgment. We feel like uh, the case is very strong um, and we're ready to make it uh, in, in the trial court and, and every level beyond that. What is your group prepared to do, considering the time it takes to print ballots and the fact that it is likely that Trump's name could well appear even if he is declared ineligible in some places? How do you plan on navigating that? Uh, well, you're right. This does move quickly. Uh, the processes in Colorado and other states for adjudicating whether somebody is qualified to be on the ballot are meant to move quickly. Uh, so, you know, we, we plan to, to go forward as quickly as we can. Uh, we hope that as secretaries of state um, see this playing out and hopefully see courts ruling that Donald Trump is, uh, is, is not qualified under the Constitution, that, that decision makers in a lot of states will start making similar decisions. Uh, it's going to be a process and there will be some back and forth, um, but we are prepared to move it as quickly as we can. And, and we hope that the uh, appropriate decision makers are as well. One more scenario for you. We've got about 45 seconds here. Considering the way Republican primaries work for front runners regarding delegates, Trump you know, could have the nomination wrapped up in early 2024. At what point would your group shift its focus to the November ballot, if that would even be possible after the convention? Uh, well, look, we, we think that it is clear under the Constitution that he can't serve. Uh, he's, he's not qualified. So we're going to keep pushing this. Um, we think the earlier it is adjudicated, the less disruptive it will be in the process. Um, but we're not going to you know, ignore what the Constitution requires uh, based on any kind of politics. It, we're, we're in this for the long haul. Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. CEO Noah Bookbinder, thank you for your time and your insight. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.